If you're not familiar with tether logging, basically this is a new technology that uh, makes it possible to operate ground-based equipment on steep slopes by attaching those machines to a upslope uh, anchor using cable or tether. Um, it was introduced to North, uh, Pacific Northwest about 10 years ago, and it has been uh, rapidly adopted by the uh, industry. The, the first behind it is uh, safety. Uh, the, the only method we had, you know, how to cut down trees on steep slopes without this technology was manual uh, chainsaw. And we all know that the timber falling is uh, very dangerous. It's one of the most dangerous jobs in the US. And also it's getting more and more difficult to find people who are willing to work uh, in this harsh environment. And uh, of course it is, it, it is getting more and more expensive to hire timber fallers because of the increasing uh, workers' compensation rates and, and so on. So there's a lot of problems with timber, uh, manual timber falling. Um, there are two kinds of equipment in this technology. One is integrated uh, machine with onboard winch system. So usually it cut to length system like a, a harvester and forwarder, as you can see in my slide here, um, they have onboard uh, winch and you can pull out cables and attach it to a stump or a tree as an anchor. And uh, there is a second uh, system that is a separate anchor or, or base machine. So in this case, there is a base machine and then the cutting machine and two machines work as a pair. So industry likes this because it's safer and then cost competitive uh, alternative to manual timber falling. Um, but having this uh, heavy equipment, which weighs over 100,000 pounds, that run up and down on, on steep slopes, basically you know, can certainly raise, raise a lot of concerns about, for environmental impacts, especially soil impacts. So OSU has been looking at uh, this soil impact issues um, from different uh, angles. Uh, first approach was uh, we developed the theoretical models to analyze uh, machine stability and traction and estimate ground pressure. And we did some field experiment to verify our uh, uh, theoretical model results. And then we wanted to look at real world applications of the system. So we, we have conducted three case studies so far uh, to look at immediate soil response after logging. And also in one study, we did a long term, uh, longer term uh, monitoring um, to, to look at subsequent impacts of logging on soil, soil erosion, moisture content change and plant growth. So this uh, slide shows uh, the field experiment we did with a machine Basically, we, we buried a um, load cell underneath the machine track and we move the booms in and out and rotate machine and monitor how ground pressure changes. What we learned from our uh, theoretical models as well as this field experiment is that uh, this tethering uh, really helps uh, evenly distribute the load across along the machine track. So here, without, without tether, you can see most, uh, most load of this machine concentrates uh, bottom tip of the track, this black dot here. You can see high, high ground pressure. Uh, whereas with, uh, with tethering, uh, we can see better distribution of load across this uh, track, which also means that uh, tethering helps uh, the tra machine track uh, better engage with soils. So there, there, there's, there would be more area of track uh, that, that is uh, in contact with ground. So better distribution of load, that means uh, reduced uh, peak pressure that can be translated into less soil disturbance and also better engagement track, that means improved traction. So that can improve uh, machine stability um, as well. Let's move on to the, the quick draw. Uh, the first uh, field study that we did. So we did this uh, field study, case study, in our school forest. And we use this uh, cut to length system, um, harvest and forward. So this is integrated um, system with a uh, onboard winch. And we apply this to thinning operation uh, in 2017. The soil was very clay and dry. It was, it was August, um, dry soil. And then the objective of this study was to look at the difference between tethered and untethered operation in terms of soil impact. So in this harvest unit, we established two corridors. One is the untethered corridor and the other is tethered corridor. And then we um, collected soil samples and measured soils before and after logging. And when we, uh, so we, we measured burp density 
and penetration resistance at multiple depths from 10 to 50 centimeters after logging. Um, and then we took soil samples from in track and outside track and between tracks from about 30 different uh, sample plots. The results, this is kind of eye-opening at that time um, results because we saw quite different, substantial difference between untethered and tethered cases. On the left, you see the untethered case uh, results. On the right, tethered case. These upper figures show the results after harvester, so one machine pass. And then bottom figures show the results from folder, after folder. So this is after multiple folder uh, passes. In untethered case, um, you see a lot of red X marks and this marks indicates statistically significant increase in, in soil density. So there, there was compassion occurring across the board basically in an untethered case. In tethered case, you see these blue arrows and they indicate significant decrease in soil density. So this was kind of eye-opening results because we saw loosening of soil from, from this study. Uh, after harvester, we saw loosening of soil um, in many places. And after even folder, we saw loosening on top soil and there are some compaction we were able to find and that, but, but compaction was only underneath the track and there's a small spot outside track. So why we had a loosening? because we haven't seen this uh, much very often in literature. We thought that because, uh, because of the soil was clay and dry, it was very hard soil. So I, we, we thought that the track, I mean machine track caused like tillage effect. It loosens up soil, it breaks up soil. That's why we found this loosening occurred. So takeaways from this study, there was some loosening of soil occur occurred, uh, we, we found. And then in tethered case, there was a, a lot less soil compaction compared to untethered case. And then another thing we found was that tethering keeps the machine on the same spots. So it tends to keep the machine on the same spot, resulting in concentrated distur disturbance area instead of having wide area disturbed like in un untethered case. The second uh, case study uh, we did in Southwest Oregon and uh, this is in public land, I mean, it's private land and uh, clear cut. And the purpose of this uh, objective of this study was to compare hand cut with machine cut, tethered machine cut in terms of soil impact. So you can see here yellow area, about 30% of the harvest unit was cut by hand. And then about 70% of the unit uh, was cut by tethered logging equipment. And then we looked at immediate soil response after logging. And as well as in this, in this study, we looked at, we did a long-term monitoring, about two-year monitoring uh, to look at subsequent impact of logging on soil erosion and plant growth. This is the logging system that we used in this study. So basically the separate uh, anchor machine and cutting machine system um, we used. And then after that, we used this Thunderbird um, Tao Yadar to cable log both hand cut and machine cut areas. Just like a quick uh, draw uh, study site, um, we established these uh, two uh, machine corridors or the two corridors, one in machine cut area and the other is the hand cut area. And we measured and, and took soil samples before and after harvesting. And for long, longer term monitoring, we, we, we set up um, like seven, um, seven silt fences across the unit. And four of them were in the machine cut area, two of them along the skyline corridor, and two of them in the machine tracks, and three of them are hand cut area. And also we installed this uh, soil moisture uh, probes um, to monitor moisture change on, um, in machine tracks versus non-tracks. So we found four different locations uh, where, where we can see, we could see um, clear machine tracks. And then we installed this uh, instruments in two spots. One is on machine track and the other is outside undisturbed. So this, uh, this works as a pair for comparison. Um, and each spot, we installed five of these sensors um, for five different depths in soil. And also we did a seedling growth experiment. So we set up these three blocks of seedlings 
in the machine track area and non-track area. So each block has uh, one row of seedlings uh, following the machine track and the other is outside track. And then we did a uh, destructive sampling um, before and after growing seasons uh, in two years after the logging or after planting. And then we measured shoot volume and root volume and, and dry mass and so on uh, from, the, from those seedlings. The results, uh, basically, if you look at the soil impact or the soil compaction, uh, this, this result shows the hand cut area. There's no, not much difference between pre and post in hand cut area. We were able to see some loosening of soil uh, in this case as well, but there is no significant compaction we found from hand cut area. If you look at the machine cut area, oh, by the way, um, this, uh, this ratio, the x-axis ratio is ratio of post to pre. So if it is one, that means no difference between pre and post. If it's bigger than one, there's a compaction. If it's less than one, there's loosening occurred. And then if you look at the machine cut area, uh, these figures show the results after machine uh, falling. And then the bottom figures show after cable logging. And similar to hand cut area, we were able to see some loosening, again, the top soils and some areas, but we are not able to find any soil significant compaction um, in this machine cut area. And another interesting um, observation we made from this study was that soil disturbance along skyline corridors, because we know the skyline corridors is the ones that heavily disturbed in cable logging unit. And if you look at this machine cut area, uh, you can see these nicely piled up trees. So because a machine is not only able to cut down trees, but also it can move trees and nicely pile up along the skyline corridor, uh, as you can see here, they used only five skyline corridors to cable log about 70% of the unit. But if you look at the hand cut area, because felled timber is everywhere, they had to use six skyline corridors, so more skyline corridors to cable log only 30% of the unit. So if you look at the disturbed area in terms of amount of area disturbed, the hand cut area could be, could have larger disturbed area. But if you look at the intensity of disturbance, because one corridor is heavily used by many, many trees, okay, uh, disturbance could be uh, more, more intense in the hand cut area, I mean the machine cut area. So there's a trade-off between uh, in intensity of disturbance versus the area, amount of area disturbed. Um, from the silt fences, uh, during the two year monitoring period, we were not able to find any sign of soil erosion or sediment transport uh, out of any of those seven uh, silt fences. Moisture content is another interesting uh, finding here for this case study. And look at here, machine track um, monitoring data, moisture content data, and then non-track uh, out of four different locations. Um, you can see here that machine track has higher lines, that means higher moisture content than non-track locations. So this is uh, from more than one and a half year monitoring. Okay, and then this, this graph shows daily mean um, moisture content value. If you look at the uh, difference between track and non-track areas, the difference becomes more obvious here. So first, um, this graph shows uh, track minus non-track. So interestingly, it's all positive. That means moisture content in track area is always higher than non-track area. This is really interesting finding uh, out of four locations, random locations. And then another interesting uh, point is that this dry season, these gray lines indicate precipitation. And then if you look at the dry season, the difference becomes larger than rainy season. So that means during, during dry season, track area can hold up moisture better than non-track undisturbed area. And dry season, as we know, water can be a limiting factor for tree growth. So this is really interesting 
uh, finding. And then, and then our uh, seedling growth data also supports that moisture content difference. Um, so if you look at the, the first um, growing season after planting, there's not much difference between track and non-track, the seedling growth. But the second year, we start seeing large difference. So track area, we see larger um, seedling in terms of volume and dry mass. So really interesting um, you know, finding uh, because you know, in this particular study area, trees grew better on machine tracks. So takeaways, there's no, not much significant difference uh, in soil compaction between hand cut and machine cut area. And there was a trade-off between intensity of disturbance and uh, area of disturbance uh, along the skyline corridors. And then no soil erosion or sediment transport we, we found from the study area. And then higher soil moisture in track area benefiting uh, seedling growth. And then the last study, I have to go fast here. Um, and then um, we did this study. Odom, uh, and, just to let you know, we have about a minute yep, for you yep, to okay. wrap it up. So, so last study, uh, this is high elevation and different soil types, sandy loam, silt loam. And the study objective is to compare four different harvest systems here. So the four different harvest systems include, the first, first system is a fellow buncher, the tethered machine cut, and then tethered skidding. And the second one is tethered cutting with tethered shovel loading. And the third one is a status quo, so traditional hand falling and traditional cable loading. The third one is machine cutting and grape yarding. So we apply these four different systems uh, into these four quarters uh, set up side by side. Okay? And then we measured the soil uh, before and after. This is the result. We were able to find decrease in soil density um, three out of four quarters on top soil. So loosening again occurred here, but in quarter A, which is the uh, tetra skidding, we found significant compaction across soil profile. And then tether shoveling, there were some compaction, but the magnitude of the, the, the change in soil density wasn't as bad as a uh, tether skidding. And then the traditional cable logging and the grapple yarding, there wasn't not much difference between pre and post. So that was it. So concluding remarks. Um, Definitely, there, there are some benefits of tethering. Okay, tethering can reduce negative soil impact compared to untethered operations. And then our three, three case studies show that soil disturbance from tethered logging um, doesn't seem very significant compared to currently accepted harvesting practices. And as you know, soil is widely variable. So we need to do more case studies to better understand machine soil interactions uh, for different soil types under different working conditions. And acknowledgements for sponsors and uh, a lot of collaborators and a lot of people who helped helped out throughout this study.